Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know that this is my mini-series in which I am diving into a very particular and unique deck called The Tarot of the Holy Light by Christine Payne Towler. And, um, if you are a returning visitor, you probably already know the process, but just in case you're a newcomer, let me give it to you. Every morning, I pull one card, this is a card, from the Tarot of the Holy Light, and I look at it. And I acknowledge the meanings and the ideas that I have about similar cards from a Rider Waite Smith, a Smith a Waite, a Harris Crowley, Golden Dawn style deck. And I acknowledge those meanings so that I can try to untangle the card I am looking at from those meanings. Because I know that this deck is a different system. It's a system based on the Continental Tarot, from which we also, well, within which we also think of things like the Tarot de Marseille, the Atea deck, etc. So, I try to distinguish those in my head as much as I can, and then I pull three cards from a very, very easy to read and comfortable deck called the Tarot, the, <laughs> the Light Seer's Tarot, um, which is a completely RWS, a Smith weight based deck. And I pull three cards, a three card spread. The first card is the significance of the card I pulled from the Tarot of the Holy Light. The second card is the obstacle, and the third card is the advice. So, significance, obstacle, advice. Very common three card spread. And so I sit with those. I sit with the card that I pulled, the three cards that I pulled to help me unpack that first card, and I live my life during for that day. And at the end of the day, I open up the guidebook for the Tarot of the Holy Light, and I look at the meaning of the card I pulled in the morning of, as it was intended by the Creator. And I reflect on all of that and what happened during the day. So, what did I pull today? Thank goodness it wasn't death, and it wasn't the world, but it's a card that has been coming up for me quite a bit, and it was the Two of Cups. Now, the Two of Cups has been coming up for me in the Lightseer's Tarot very often, but this time it came up upright, thank goodness, in the Tarot of the Holy Light, which was a nice surprise. Um, and just to uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> Jumping to the end of this video, I think that this card is the indication of a first step that has not revealed itself completely to me yet. Just reflecting on the day and the meaning of this card, I think this is like the door has opened and I haven't really fully appreciated what's on the other side. So, but the Two of Cups came up. And so my first ideas and thoughts about the Two of Cups from the um, deck drawn by Pamela Coleman-Smith, those meanings were romance, emotional union, uh, the joining of partners, uh, the, uh, I said romance, yeah, but not always romance, it's still two beings joined in some emotionally beneficial tie. Could be co-workers. It could be family members. Um, it doesn't always have to be romantic, right? So, I, all those things came to my mind, and I thought, well, in this card, I can still see that, but I think there's much more to this than just that. Um, we've got these two uh, beings here. I thought they were both snakes at first, but one is a snake and one is apparently a bird. The bluish green one is a bird and the reddish one is a snake. But still, they're like two snakes, one eating the tail of the other, creating a circle, a never-ending circle of um, feeding and generating. Got the sun and the moon, sun in the morning and the moon at night. Yeah, we got the two cups, one facing up, one facing down, two hands support, supporting them. So we've got this duality going on in the card as well. Mercury is at the center, and we know that Mercury is a um, uh, an uh, uh, hermaphrodite. Uh, it's uh, an androgynous being, right? Uh, Mercury is not 
fully male, not fully, fully female. It's an androgynous being. Um, and the partner of Jupiter, one of the partners of Jupiter. Uh, and on the outside here, we've got Saturn, and those two seem to be, could be a little bit in conflict, but I don't think they're necessarily in conflict in this card. Moving right along. So I thought about all those things. I thought about the 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 um the joining of the two, the red and the blue, that kind of uh duality joining into a union. And then I pulled my three cards from the Light Seers Tarot. And let me show you those cards right now. So you saw the cards were the Page of Cups. When I saw that, I thought, okay, so I guess the, maybe this is a romance reading. Maybe this is a, a love-based reading. Maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, then we got the, in the, the obstacle section was the hope card, right? The star. That was a little surprising. And then as advice, we have the seven of wands. Now, these, some of these, well, these cards may seem to be in odd positions in this spread for some people. Um, not entirely for me. I kind of get a message from this in this sequence. Let me show you. So, the Page of Cups. Page of Cups is the, to me, is several things. It's the, the young romantic. Yeah. And we see the energy coming from the heart of this page up to this other being in the sky. But we also see that pigs have wings here, too. Now, yeah? I don't know if you can see that here, but there's a little piggy up there with wings. And then from that, I think of the Lion in Winter, um, uh, <laughs> when Henry tells Eleanor, uh, when uh, uh, Henry, okay, Henry tells Eleanor that yes, he will release her from prison. This is King Henry II and his wife, Queen Eleanor. He's got her pr pr imprisoned. He says, "Yes, I'll imprison. I will free you from prison when pigs have wings." Eleanor's response is, well, there will be pork in the treetops come morning. <laughs> Anyways, so that's, those are the things that come to mind. And that, so that's a, a, an interesting love relationship, a struggling love relationship, right? If you know the play. Also, we see the, the two hands forming a heart here and the fish in the center. The page of cups in Pamela Coleman Smith's art is the one with holding the cup with the fish head poking out of it, right? It's the surprise. It's, oh, what's that? Yeah, uh, intuitive messages, love messages are possible possibilities here. Those are the things that come to mind here, and so this, in combination with this, made me think, okay, so maybe love, maybe this is a love reading, maybe, 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 maybe. And then I got this next card. In the shadow position, in the obstacle position, the star. Usually we think of, oh, the star. This is all, all. It's after the tower. It's the card that says there is hope. I'm following my, I have my North Star and I'm following my light. I found my path. I know where I'm going and I've got hope and there's a resurgence of good feelings and joy. And you see here um, the figure holding a star on a string here, which is kind of comes down to her, but it's also wrapped around her hands right at her heart. Yeah. How could this be shadow? How could this be an obstacle? Well, sometimes hope can be an obstacle. And I'm reminded of, and I don't remember the movie, but I remember seeing, a, it's a romantic comedy. I remember seeing a, the princess-like character, it might not have been a princess, but the princess-like character Singing, uh, someday my prince will come, someday my prince will, that kind of song, or saying those kinds of things, in the company of the person who we know from the beginning is probably the one that she should be falling in love with in the first place. So she's got this hope of this future, that, and not looking at the thing that's right there in front of her face. So in that sense, that could be one instance in which hope can be an obstacle. Yeah? Get, being so attached to your hope that you don't even look at what's there in front of you. That there, you have a hope realized right there in front of you. It could also be um, the, uh, 
the shadow side of hope of uh, distrusting your hopes, distrusting yourself, distrusting your North Star, that kind of distrust could be the reversed meaning of the star. So it could be distrust, loss of hope, but it could also be being so attached to the hope that you don't see what's right there. And so that it was interesting that this came up as the advice. Now, for a lot of people, this is a fairly negative card. It's the hold your ground. There are, there's, there are people coming after you, after your, your position. Yeah. After the six of wands, the six of wands is, is victory, triumph. You're riding in on your horse after a, a war parade, a victory parade. And at this point, it's yeah, you've been you've been victorious, but now some a lot of people are coming after your seat. So for me, this card is a little bit more nuanced. Yeah, that could be that. It could be that certainly. But these wands, you notice that most of the time these wands are not held by people. They're just coming up from, from below, from the darkness. So I often will see these things as being the internal, the um, the conflicting passions or the, the feelings of perhaps unworthiness of having achieved something. Maybe the imposter syndrome, those prods from below that that are trying to knock you off of your high horse. And so it's not standing your ground in conflict always with other people, but standing your ground even in the face of internal turmoil, which just needs to be observed and to let go so that you can retain your own ground, not as a struggle, but as a sense of um, uh, worthiness. Maintaining your worthiness. And so you see in this picture, that that's kind of what I get here. Hold your ground. Know that you are worthy of as being who you are, where you are, and that what you want is coming your way or here. And you'll notice that there's this light right there in the solar plexus of the being in the, the magic bubble. Yeah, the solar plexus, the will. The will to hold your ground, to be yourself, be authentically yourself in the light of self. So those are the things that were running around in my head as we as I started the day. I went through the day um, and then I came back and I eventually got around to reading the book. Let me tell you what the meaning of this card, the Two of Cups, is. In the book. So, just a couple things. Let me read this. The Two of Cups generally signifies the union of opposites, often showing an Adam and Eve theme. Now, Adam and Eve are perhaps one being that, have, that has been split apart, right? Adam, there's the, the original Adam, which might also have been androgynous, splits apart into male and female. And so we've got that creation of opposites, right? So it's the union of those op opposites, the union of the split. The card is traditionally associated with a romantic relationship, but between the lines can be found all types of partnerships based on affinity and deep mutual understanding. Sometimes it means that your outer self and your inner self are discovering each other possibly for the first time. So that's always a possibility. Moving right along. A one who embodies both cups within his or herself has the advantage of being able to deploy both male and female styles of thinking. So we have sometimes we each have all of that within us. I'm putting it right here, but it's not just in the head. It's also in the heart. It's also in the solar plexus. It's also in the vagus nerve. It's we have polar by, sides. We have sides of our minds. We have. The, the rational, we have the holistic. We have the masculine, we have the feminine. We have all of those parts within us, within us. And a lot of us tend to lean into one side or the other. But here, we have the possibility to unite all of them and have access to the united strength of, 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 of all those styles of thinking. That's where I left off of thinking, communicating, and acting, all those things. 
This is tr a tremendous blessing. Actually, the cognitive and emotional equivalent of ambidexterity. Ambidexterity. Yeah? Androgyny. Ambidexterity. You've got it all. So the joining of all. It's an alchemical. It, this card is also an alchemical card. Moving right into the alchemy right now. This is traditionally, I'm sorry, let me go get, yes. This is traditionally the time when one's alchemical goals are brought to their peak expression. In this card, all conditions are in place to signal fertility, increase, progressive influences, and fortunate partnerships. Even Mars' rulership of this decanate supports the moon's foray into the fiery, or out, I'm sorry, outgoing realm of Leo. Leo, Leo. So we've got all of that, yeah? We've got the binary joined into a superpower unity. And that superpower unity can enhance our creativity, our thinking, our communication. We also have the possibility of having Cancer and Leo in union together here as well. Um, we have uh, fertility, increase, influence, and we also have in relationships. So, my day. My day, my way, my day. Um, today, today my mother was was released from isolation into the general population, which is wonderful because it allows me a lot more, her more freedom, freedom, but also me a lot more freedom. Yeah. Um, let me show, insert a picture right here. So that was me in my most comfortable garb when I was with my mother in isolation. Sometimes I had that shield, which made things much easier. They didn't always give me the option of that shield. Sometimes I had, the, you know, those, those goggles we wore in chemistry class, those ones those that fit really tightly around your eyes. I had to wear those most of the time. That was one day when I got the face shield. And again, that was much more comfortable with those goggles. After about an hour in those goggles, it becomes a painful, slowly more and more painful because of the pinching of the pressure right around here. So now that my mother is out of isolation after like three days here, um, and my being there as much as I possibly can all day in that garb, now I can just walk into her room with a mask, but walk into her room and walk out of her room. I didn't have to go through the ritual of putting all that on. And then there's another ritual of taking it all off bit by bit by bit in the right order, and then sterilizing the hands in between, and there's a whole process to doing all of that. Now I can just walk in. Tomorrow, I could bring my laptop into my mom's room, and I could actually, while she's napping, do some work or play around or read something. I could bring a book in. I could bring a book to sit with my mother when she's sleeping. I couldn't do any of that. I was just in that garb with not being able to bring anything in with me. So. There's a whole world of freedom that is um, available to me and her because of that. Also today, she showed much more, many more signs of uh, activity. Yeah, She got up and walked to the bathroom with a walker, but walked to the bathroom and back all on her own. I watched her to make sure everything was going to go okay, but she did all of that on her own. Um, she's getting a little bit more cranky about being in a hospital, wanting to get out of there and get home. But that's a good sign, I think. Um, she was more awake. She wanted to sit up more. Uh, all of those are wonderful signs, I believe. She ate more at dinner. Uh, she ate a little bit more at lunch than she has. So eating more is good. Um, the doctors are worried about some other things, but I think the from the outside it looks like progress is being made and that was all wonderful so i was able to leave her after helping her eat her dinner which and she didn't need as much help as she did as even though she did eat much more i was able to leave and get to my place 
not only on time, but with plenty of time to spare for eating dinner here in the hospital hotel. I'm the, yes, the hospital hotel. I wanted to do my laundry the night before, but the machines are, were all being used. I have access to free laundry machines. All I have to do is bring the soap. That, isn't that a wonderful thing, being in a hospital hotel? Anyways, so I, so I got here, I put my laundry in the machine, I put the soap in the machine, and I got it started, and I went off and had dinner, and I came back, and then there was more time. So I decided I was on a mission from God. I don't know if you know, this is ending up being kind of long. Anyways, um, I think I mentioned that I, on a whim, purchased some rune pendants, pendants right? So yesterday, I showed you my uh, wunjo pendant. And that wunjo is joy. Yeah, that's my, just a one word keyword I'm tossing out there. Today I'm wearing my gebo uh, pendant, uh, which is uh, to me the gift giving. It can also be the sacrifice of uh, receiving the gifts of Odin. It could also be the sacrifice of Odin on the tree in which he gets the runes. I, I mentioned that, I believe. I also got a perthro. Um, Perthro, uh, pendant, and Perthro for me is um, it can be gaming. Yeah, it kind of looks like a uh, a dice cup, right? A dice cup, but it could also be a divination rune, the rune of the diviner of divination. So I love all these. There were other ones that I didn't really want to carry home with me and wear as my banner. But um, <clears throat> there was one that I wanted and I couldn't find that day. So today I was on a mission from God. I'm going to get that one. Which one, you ask? It was, it's um, Kanaz. Kanaz. Uh, which is the, uh, it's, it's, like a, a, it's like a greater than symbol in mathematics. Yeah, it's like this, a greater than symbol. Um, and it's the, the one that reminds me of the hermit when I think of the runes. Yeah, the light of the hermit, the, the lantern, shining light out this way, shining light out this way. And so it's the hermit, enlightenment. It could also be fire. It could, be, it could also be romantic fire, relationships. So that's the rune I wanted in addition to these. But I couldn't find it that day. So this time I was going to go search all the gift shops or that I know are near my place and I went out and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I, it's different, but I found one. That's the one I wanted. In addition to the ones I have. Now I couldn't find it the exact same kind, but this is good enough. This is what I wanted. So there we go. I got that. I got my laundry done. Um, and that's basically my day today. So I, I suppose that yeah, there was creativity. I suppose the door of creativity has been opened. I don't think this card has completely fulfilled its message yet. I don't think the the meaning of this card has completely um, come into fruition. I think after being in a holding, a kind of holding pattern, a uh, transition, liminal space, we've I started to open the door to see beyond into the next stage of my life path, you might say. And so this card, I think, is giving me the first taste. And the, again, the full message of this card, I don't think has revealed itself yet. And it's going to be opening, spreading more. I hope. I hope. Because I like the Two of Cups. I like the Two of Cups, and I like the message that it's included there. Um, so that's it for today. It, I was getting kind of chatty, I think. And so it's time to stop the chatting and for you to do the thumbs up for me. So hit the thumbs up button so that if you're still here and you found this to be beneficial to you, YouTube knows that other people might find benefit in it as well and it will draw more eyes to the channel and to this video. So hit that. If you are new here and you have not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell so you get notifications of when I upload videos. For this period of time, I'm doing one a day, but after I get back into my work cycle, it won't be one a day anymore. I'll be doing one, probably two a week. 
Um, so hit that alarm bell so you get notifications of when I upload videos. And comment below. I'd love to hear what you think about this, about life in general, <laughs> about the runes, <laughs> the runes. Um, and if you want a private reading from me, I'll have my brand new email address down below. You can send me an email and we can get you a private reading. So friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.